Uh, hello everyone, I am uh, Rocketia and a student of a school PC fund by Elon Musk. And today I interviewed the Gruya space program team from the Epfiel University, which has built the world's first student built rocket hopper. Could you please introduce yourself and uh, how many are you in your team? Thank you. My name is Julie. And I'm, uh, as you say, the student at EPFL. I'm studying robotics. I founded the Gruyere Space Program in 2018. We are now uh, less than 10. We have my job since uh, since this uh, this time was to mainly I worked as a president for three years. I found the project and presented it outside of the organization. And my technical participation was more in GNC and mainly in navigation. I also worked to set up a robot structure for the code of uh, our rocket. My name is uh, Jeremy. Um... I'm also a co-founder of GSP. I'm now the new president of GSP. Uh, since the beginning, I've been uh, more into electronics and designing uh, some PCBs, but also CAD design, 3D printing parts when we were doing uh, small rockets, and more recently, uh, a bit of mechanics with the gimbal design and such things. Uh, my name is uh, Simon. I'm uh, also a co-founding uh, member of the team. So I'm uh, studying uh, mechanical engineering at EPFL. And from the beginning of the project, uh, I started doing uh, a bit of everything. And now for the past two years, I've been uh, mainly uh, working on propulsion, a bit of everything in propulsion from um, yeah, electronics to piping and testing of the engine. How did you start your uh, team? We started in 2018. At the beginning, we were only a group of four friends from Gruyere to arrive at EPFL. And our common point was uh, that we were all fascinated about space and that we really want to realize something. Uh, that's how we begin to build our first rocket model. To be honest, it was just a little piece of 3D printed plastic that uh, actually don't fly that straight. <laughs> and uh, that's how we, we begin. So adding some uh, Avenic, adding some TVC. Uh, Jovana was um, a, big, a big model for us. Uh, since two years, we are working on Colibri. Our hopper. Uh, this vehicle is not at all comparable to our small TVC rockets, and we will have a chance to explain you uh, afterwards uh, why exactly. Uh, could you speak about your uh, hopper? So, Calibri is a more than two meter high rocket, which is weighing a bit above 100 kilograms. It's designed with enough propellant for around 90 second max flight duration. Uh, so, the goal is to hop uh, under 100 meters. So, the rocket will uh, lift off, stabilize and then land vertically. So it's a vertical landing, vertical takeoff rocket. More in the technical bits, 40% uh, of the mass of the rocket is propellant. Uh, it uses uh, gimballing for stabilizing the rocket. For the planning, we are uh, targeted in the end of 2023 with uh, the first tethered flight in the summer of 2023. Do you use a liquid engine? And uh, if yes, why? Um, yeah, so we have some uh, extremely specific requirements uh, with our vehicle. We need to throttle the engine during the flight. Uh, we also need a, a very long thrust of more than one minute. So that's not really possible with commercial motors that are typically uh, solid and burn for only a few seconds. Um, so developing a, an engine was also something uh, we wanted to, to do for a long time. So we went with a bi-liquid ethanol uh, nitrous oxide, which uh, we tested uh, those past uh, six months. And yeah, we've had uh, quite a, a lot of success. We're getting quite efficient with the tests. We can uh, do up to six a day. So uh, that's great. And uh, next semester, um, someone will uh, work on the next version of the engine, which uh, will be uh, regen regeneratively cooled. So that will uh, allow us to do uh, longer burns uh, up to the uh, required uh, flight duration, which is approximately uh, 90 seconds. We use specialized software to get performance estimations. They helped with early design choices. It also helped to choose our propellant, ethanol and liquid nitrous oxide, also called laughing gas. Finite element analysis was also conducted to simulate temperatures and loads on some critical parts. The next step of the project was to design the combustion chamber. Here it is, 3D printed, while we are waiting for the real parts which are currently machined. Two separate chambers were designed. The first one, you can see here, is heat sink cooled and can only do short tests to gather data. It will help for the next one, which is still in development and will be regeneratively cooled by injecting the fuel through channels in the chamber wall. The engine is divided in two parts, a combustion chamber and an injector assembly. The injectors must be designed in order to properly mix the fuel and oxidizer. Nitrous oxide is injected through those 10 center holes and ethanol through those 10 impinging injector pairs. It was also necessary to build a test stand for the engine. The combustion chamber goes here at the front of the stand. On the other side of the wall is the fuel subsystem. 
a 300 bars nitrogen tank pressurizes the fuel to 40 bars. The flow is then regulated through an electronically controlled ball valve. The U-shape of the wall isolates the pressurized vessel from the other elements. A PCB also had to be built to automatically control the engine. Its role is to collect data from a bunch of sensors and make quick decisions based on the state of the engine. It can also be manually controlled with a remote control station. Thank you for your attention. We hope you enjoyed learning about our project. Uh, bon appétit! Uh, what are your team's goals? So, as Jeremy said, we started with the Colibri program uh, two years ago. Uh, starting directly with the hopper would not have been a good idea. So, we first study the two biggest challenges of the rocket separately. So, uh, half of the team, so Pierre et Simon, as we are not uh, that big team, uh, work on propulsion. And the other half, so Jeremy and I work mainly as a GNC, so guidance, navigation, and control. For the guidance, navigation, and control, we have designed a UAV that is a test platform for our Hobionics and GNC algorithm. Uh, this platform successfully flew last summer, and we are still using it for tests and to improve our, our control. For the propulsion part, three months ago, we had a successfully uh, static fire for an line. That was a really big achievement and we are really proud of it. Uh, so that was for the two main challenges of our hopper, but concerning the hopper itself, Simon and uh, Jeremy have almost finished the design of Colibri and it's uh, partially manufactured. That our future milestone will be to fully assemble it and uh, to launch it by the end of uh, 2023. How much did it cost to build your uh, rocket and uh, how did you get uh, the money to build your rocket? So actually it's not, uh, uh, our rocket is really not expensive. That's one of uh, the things that make our vehicle unique. is quite cheap considering the other student team uh, budgets in general. Uh, the world development uh, is under say 60,000 francs, Swiss francs. So it makes it uh, quite cheap and for uh, vertical landing, vertical takeoff rocket, uh, it's quite a great achievement. How did you get that money? We got this money thanks to sponsors. We started gradually, uh, initially, uh, as uh, Julie explained, uh, we had the first part of our development where we, we were designing the rocket engine and our UAV. And for this part, we needed uh, less money. We started uh, with uh, small sponsors, and uh, that was kind of the proof, technical proof, or, or ability to develop uh, such things. And now we can, it's easier to ask for more money, be able to ask for more money to the sponsors and present uh, Colibri as uh, the big project and get the funds for it. How does your engine work? Yeah, so uh, for our upper, we have um, very uh, specific requirements to throttle the engine in flight. Uh, it's also a pretty long thrust, so that's not the kind of things you can get with uh, commercial motors, so we had to do our, our own, um, which is a bi-liquid uh, rocket engine with uh, ethanol and nitrous oxide, which, uh, as uh, Julie explained, we, we tested uh, uh, three months ago, and um, it was quite successful. It's really a, a typical um, bi-liquid rocket engine for a, a student team. Um, we decided to uh, split the development in uh, two phases. Um, first, we did a um, simple combustion chamber, which uh, is basically a, a block of copper um, that can only do um, four seconds of burns. And it allowed us to uh, test everything uh, from the injector to the tanks, the pressurization system. Um, and next semester, we will enter the second phase of the development, uh, where one member of the team will develop another version, which is uh, reg regeneratively cooled. Uh, so that will allow us to test the full um, the full burn duration, uh, so approximately 90 seconds. How did you put thrust vectoring on your engine? Um, so thrust vector control system is based on uh, the Kimballing systems. Uh, so you take your engine and you rotate it around two axes to get... Uh, uh, torque control on your rocket. Uh, so we're using a uh, linear actuator uh, from ultra motion. These are very performant and we're really happy uh, to have been able to get uh, such actuators. And uh, for, for gable control, you only get uh, two axes of control. So for the third axis, uh, we're using reaction control system to, um, to get the, proper, the full control of the rocket. Did you develop your own uh, PCB? Uh, so we started early uh, with uh, the first TVC rockets we designed. So we were designing uh, the smallest PCB we could. Uh, maybe you've heard of uh, Jobana uh, contest for the smallest PCB uh, for TVC rockets. Uh, one of the first team to do uh, the smallest uh, TVC uh, PCB, so TVC rocket PCB. Then we continued and now for Colibri, uh, we're drawing a board uh, based on uh, TNC 4.1. Uh, so yeah. Uh, that's a board based on uh, Arduino, so a custom board. 
uh, we're not using uh, the already uh, pre-made uh, PCB from TNC, but we're using only the chip which is on it. Uh, but still, we're using Arduino because it's modern enough for application and uh, it's easy to use. What software did you As students, uh, we are very fortunate to have access to uh, a lot of uh, software, um, either through our university or through student uh, programs. So um, to give some uh, specific example, for example, for uh, CAD, uh, we are using uh, Katia. Um, we are doing a, a lot of uh, simulation uh, with ANSYS. Uh, and when we need to do some optimization or some more complex calculation, uh, we will typically use uh, MATLAB and Simulink. How do you transfer data from the rocket to a ground station? As Colibri won't fly very high, less than 100 meters, uh, we're going to use Wi-Fi because it will allow for high bandwidth uh, for camera to get camera feed from the rocket during the flight. Quite easy to use. Yeah, so we are using Wi-Fi. How much of the rocket do you build and how much do you outsource to other companies? Uh, the goal of the project is to learn as much as possible. So. Um, we try to do as much ourselves, um, so th that way we learn more, we're also more independent, and we can iterate faster. But since we're quite a small team, sometimes if we have some deadlines, nobody is available, it's often necessary to rely on our sponsors or to ask for some pieces to be machine. That allows us to gain times when we need it, uh, or maybe for some uh, very complex parts, uh, for example, uh, our engine. Uh, those were extremely complex uh, pieces that we really couldn't make uh, ourselves. So um, we uh, decided to uh, outsource that. Um, uh, same things for the tanks, for example, um, where we need the welding, which requires a lot of experience. Um, so we didn't want to do it ourselves. Also, um, for the next version of our engine, we, we probably need the metal 3D printing. It isn't really possible when we are small. Uh, uh, student team to, to do ourselves. So really as much as possible, but as long as we have time and uh, it's within uh, our resources. To manage and support your team. So as we are a small team, everybody is more or less informed of the project progress. However, it is very important for us that the information is properly structured in order to avoid important loss of time or loss of information. Uh, to give you more specific details of uh, our projects, so we use Git for uh, all our code. Uh, and uh, drives for the CAD files or our administrative uh, files. Uh, in order to solve current problems and to stay informed, uh, weekly meeting is also organized. Uh, we try to keep it uh, as uh, short and efficient as we can. Um, technical problems are treated separately in other meetings or just when, when we can, uh, when we can uh, see each other. Everyone to keep a global uh, understanding of the project. We always update, uh, update our general gun chart it's very important for us to have this uh, overall uh, view of our project. Very important. Uh, why? Because um, it allows to manage dependencies between tasks and to anticipate uh, possible delay um, due to our team or due to um, suppliers, for example. This is a really important thing to, to kind of, uh, anticipate the, the eventual uh, delays. Afterwards, um, to be honest with you, as we are a small team, it's uh, easier for, for us to, to avoid the communication problem. We really try to make everyone in control of the project and uh, to have a real overview of all the technical and administrative accept, aspects as everyone can have a real impact on the project and we can uh, lead, uh, lead that. We don't have uh, one or two leaders. Everybody is a leader in our How do you promote your team? Uh, each member has uh, the possibility to promote uh, its work uh, as part of GSP. Uh, Julie and myself are mainly managing uh, the, the social medias. We try to target high quality content uh, to promote also our sponsors. Without uh, our sponsors, we won't be able to continue this project. Furthermore, it's always a, a pleasure to answer people's questions and uh, inform everyone about uh, our project. What can members learn in your team? Uh, a lot. Um, we are a very small team, so each member is uh, is very important. and. Uh, from the beginning, we'll have uh, really a, a lot of responsibility. We really try to let everyone um, choose what he, he wants to, to work on. So if someone is uh, more interested in electronics or in 
mechanics. Um, as long as it's useful for the, the project, uh, really uh, anything is, is possible. So there's a, a lot of variety. It could be something uh, pretty theor theoretical, like GNC software or simulation, or something that's more hands-on, um, for example, building pipes or uh, machining uh, PCs. How do you recruit new members? We do not tend to uh, make uh, active recruitments. Uh, but uh, we are always uh, looking for new, very motivated team members. Uh, we keep uh, the team members inside of sco our school, the nearby schools uh, from EPFL. For us, the, the ideal team member will be some, someone really motivated and interested in uh, many fields. Yeah, for example, uh, each one of us is working on uh, everything on the rocket and not on the rocket, uh, for example. Uh, we do as much uh, management or marketing as uh, development on the rocket. By the way, for the EPFL students listening to us, we might, uh, so we will uh, soon open a new recruitment. We have uh, some uh, very interesting uh, posts to give you. Do you have any big announcements or dreams? The next event we will participate to uh, is EAC, so International Astronautical Congress. It's uh, in Paris this year, and we have the honor to present our work there. So it's a really, really pleasure to be able to participate in such an event and yeah, to just present what we did uh, so far. So that's the next uh, event we can announce. What are the plans of your team in for the future? So we would love to turn our project into a business and are thinking about it more and more. Also, the space market is saturated, a technology that is not that much used in Europe. So the, the hopping, uh, the, the landing. And we are ver a very strong team and the project is quite well at once. So maybe we could find us a place in the, in the space uh, space industry. Do you play Kerbal Space Program? Yeah, so we, we played a, a lot of uh, K KSP. Unfortunately, we don't have uh, much, uh, much time now. So... Uh, not a, a lot anymore, but yeah, uh, Kerbal Space Program is is great. It uh, it can teach uh, teach you a, a lot of things. Um, it won't help to learn some specific things uh, on uh, some systems or how, how things work, but some um, concepts such as uh, ISP and orbital mechanics, uh, it can gives you a, a really intuitive and fundamental um, understanding of those that. You won't find uh, in textbooks. Another great thing uh, that's in KSP and that we wish I wish we had uh, in real, real life is the river to launch button. Uh, that will be pretty useful. Uh, do you have any advice for young rocketeers? Uh, yes, we have some. I think, uh, first of all, it's better to join a team or create your own as we did. You will progress a lot more uh, as a team and then learn much more things. Uh, furthermore, don't be scared of uh, the aerospace. Start to learn brick by brick and grow experience on each of your achievements. And don't try to go very fast, or you can try to go very fast, but uh, you will fail and you have to fail. Uh, indeed, we, we've crashed many rockets until now. And uh, yeah, maybe yeah, maybe one last um, advice is uh, be cautious with explosives as we are building rockets. I think the last one is the best. <laughs> Do you have any questions for me? So what is your plan for the future? Do you want to become a journalist or a space engineer? What exactly is your, is your plan for, for the future? I would like to start a company that builds rockets. I don't know specifically what kind of rocket it will make, like a small rocket for sending small satellites, a big rocket, a rocket for sending humans to the planets. I don't know that yet, but something rocket related that uh, would be interesting okay so more launcher company than something else in space really the launcher is uh, we will see what type of space company it will be maybe i don't know space snacks company <laughs> although that's not very probable uh, did you ever made rockets a small model or something like this just to to learn uh, to understand to do something on them, on them? Uh, I've made of um, rockets, both solid fueled and liquid fueled. Uh, liquid fueled rockets have never flown because they were attached to a pretty big desk, so they didn't fly. Although I think even without the weight of the desk of wood, I didn't. I don't think it. They would. I made uh, many. I don't know how many sugar rockets. I haven't ever tried hybrid. Because uh, I don't really have a way to store a pressurized oxidizer. That is why I haven't done hybrid and my liquid engines are uh, pretty bad. Because I had to use balloons. And uh, 
Balloons have the good thing of keeping a constant pressure, but except that they're not good uh, basically for any oxygen holding uh, requirements. That's okay, for sure. <laughs> They're also They're pretty. pretty small, so like if you want a good amount of air, you need many of them, and then it becomes like a very com a very complicated hydraulics problem having dozens of balloons. Uh, have you thought about interviewing different types of people? Because as I you interview a lot of uh, students in space, so this is a really specific uh, kind of people. So do you want after to add more diversity? It could be also engineer, of course, but just to open a bit your, your mind about this subject. I have interviewed a team that is dedicated to nanotechnologies. Right now, I'm interviewing student teams, mostly space-related teams. For the future, I don't really have any plans to interview non-student teams you'll see maybe mm -hmm. the plans will change with us uh, you you almost have a non-student team at least we are students but we are not related to a school so maybe it's little change uh, with diversity any other questions or like you just felt uh, right now that you would uh, like to ask us uh, oh. i don't know maybe technical aspects that we didn't uh, yes. talk to as why much as you. do you use a bi-liquid engine and not like a one with free fuels like a tri-liquid engine so um Simply because it's uh, it's less complicated, it's less hardware, so it's cheaper. Um, we could get better performances that way, but um, we decided to to keep a, a simple vehicle. Um, it's also the first engine we did, so um, simplicity is is really something that we targeted. Yeah, as we said before, as we are a small team, we really want to be efficient, uh, as efficient as possible. So maybe it explains this thing. So bye. Thank you for the interview. It was a pleasure to, to meet you Thank and you. to speak with you. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you.